There's been growing calls for President Joe Biden to suspend the intellectual property rights that's currently preventing other countries from producing and distributing their own generic versions of the COVID-19 vaccines that we all have. And even though he promised to do this on the campaign trail, he still hasn't done it yet. There's been zero movement with regard to the waiver that he promised everyone. And this comes even as India is breaking records when it comes to daily COVID-19 cases. Hence the reason why he's facing increased pressure. Now, to his credit, Joe Biden has sent over unused AstraZeneca shots that we have, and also Moderna has pledged to allocate 500 million doses of their vaccine to the World Health Organization's COVAX program. But let's be honest here. All of these things, they're woefully inadequate. They're just baby steps to alleviate the pressure that Joe Biden is experiencing because pharmaceutical giants don't want to allow other countries to develop and produce their own COVID-19 vaccines. There are 7.6 billion people on this planet, more than 7.6 billion people. So it is logistically impossible to vaccinate everyone around the globe, which is the only way we end the pandemic, if we're only going to rely on a small handful of companies as the exclusive manufacturers of the world supply of the vaccine. So this isn't even debatable to me. We need to end this pandemic, and the only way we can do that is if we vaccinate everyone around the globe, and the only way we can do that is to make sure that countries are able to produce their own vaccine supplies. Now, it's obvious that the reason why politicians like Joe Biden aren't waiving these uh, vaccine uh, intellectual property rights is because he's protecting the bottom line of these pharmaceutical giants who want to be the exclusive manufacturers of the world supply of the COVID vaccines. But we've seen a lot of really warped and, and twisted and honestly psychopathic justifications as to why we shouldn't do just that. But I think by far the most bizarre justification comes from Senator Chris Coons of Delaware, who invoked the January 6th insurrection as the justification as to why we shouldn't waive the IP rights for the COVID vaccines. January 6th was a moment that was challenging, divisive, difficult for all of us here in Congress. And it was a wake up call that our country is badly divided. And the ways in which China has become a peer competitor in investing in R&D, in the number of patents issued, the number of research papers published, and the ways in which they are now trying to take the lead in standard essential um, standard setting bodies, um, that recent campaign uh, to put a Chinese national at the head of the WIPO, uh, where the PTO director, Andre Yanku, was, um, did yeoman's work to make sure that someone committed to a strong intellectual property system globally instead became the head of the WIPO. All of this is a wake up call for us that we need to have another Sputnik like moment of reinvestment in American innovation and competitiveness. A central part of being successful in this competition is continuing with our constitutionally created protected privacy, protected property right of a patent, something I've long believed in, and I look forward to hearing how you're contributing to working to strengthen and sustain a competitive, strong global IP system, both here in the United States and around. He literally invoked the January 6th insurrection. The logic is, well, look, America's really divided right now, and the only way that we can become united is if we become like a global leader when it comes to manufacturing. So let's definitely start during a pandemic with the COVID vaccines. Now is the time to draw the line. Now is the time where we need to be a global leader again. In other words, I don't care if people in India and around the globe are dying so long as the United States is united. It's just, it's honestly batshit insane. And the reason why it sounds insane is because... He's doing mental gymnastics because the real reason why he doesn't want to waive the IP rights is because, as Owen Higgins points out, he took $46,125 from Merck, which assists Johnson & Johnson with the production of their vaccine. He took $45,000 from Pfizer, and he took $33,000 from AstraZeneca. That is the reason why he doesn't want to waive the IP rights. It's to protect the profits of his donors. It is downright morally reprehensible, it's corruption at its core, and it's grotesque. And because his answer there was so outrageous, protesters literally staged a die-in in front of Chris Coon's home in Delaware because what he's doing is he's effectively taking a pro-death stance, and this is unforgivable. Any politician who says something like this, they have to be called out for it.
So I applaud the folks who showed up and staged that die-in, but I also think that we have to hold him accountable if we don't live in Delaware. So you can call him and tell him and demand that he waive the IP rights or support this movement by uh, letting him know at 202-224-5042. I'm going to give him a call here on the show. And um, I just want to let him know that this is unacceptable. And usually I end up ranting whenever I call politicians on this program. I think that if you simplify your message, then uh, it's better off. But sometimes it's nice to take out your frustration on them Hi, and rant. This is Senator Chris Coons. Thanks for contacting my Washington, D.C. office. If you'd like to leave a brief message or a comment for me or a member of my staff, you can do so after the tone. Thanks for calling, and we look forward to hearing from you. Hi, Senator Chris Coons. Um, I heard that you don't support waiving the IP rights of the COVID vaccines so other countries can manufacture their own versions of this life-saving drug. Um, and you cited the January 6th insurrection because... Uh, you know, we're all super divided right now, so we have to be a global leader when it comes to manufacturing. But I just want to ask you, if you are so concerned with the country being divided, don't you think that a higher wage would unite the country? You voted against the $15 an hour increase. Don't you think that Americans would be united if they didn't have to worry about dying, if they had a medical emergency, but no health insurance? You're against Medicare for all. So, it sounds really bizarre that you'd use this justification when you've done nothing to help normal Americans. So I've got to ask you, is it really because you're concerned with unity or does the $45,000 donation you took from Pfizer or the $33,000 donation you took from AstraZeneca or the $46,000 you took from Merck, the company who's helping to produce the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, does that have anything to do with your decision? Is it just sheer corruption? Because if so, I think you should just admit that because you're making yourself look really foolish defending the indefensible do you understand that if we don't actually vaccinate the entire human population a new mutation could emerge that makes the vaccines that we've received ineffective do you understand that but you're defending the indefensible all to protect the profits of your donors how do you sleep at night how do you live with yourself knowing you're such a coward? You're so morally corrupt. So I am calling. Ten seconds of recording time left. I'm calling to demand that you support waiving the IP rights of the COVID vaccines. Don't be a coward. I always run out the clock on these. Uh, again, you don't have to say as so much as I said, but I think that these politicians have to be shamed. We have to make it known that when they do things like this, when they literally take a pro-death stance, there has to be pushback. So Chris Coons apparently thinks that letting people die, hoarding vaccines, that's good for unity in America. Yeah. Don't think so, buddy. Not going to fly.